Greetings, programs. This is Wretch. Welcome back to Sherlock Holmes, the Devil's Daughter. And we need to travel... There it is. Ormond Hospital. To see what exactly is going on here with this third suspect. So while that's loading, let's go ahead and see if we've got any new clues here. No, we just got the, the classics here. Fowler, once a member of the Rasco gang. I mean, we've got a lot of stuff here that I'm not exactly I'm not exactly sure where this is all gonna go. But let's go ahead and hold up making any kind of assumptions until we speak to this third person. And then we can just kind of shoot from the hip. Now, if I remember, I think the person is here specifically because I'm apparently in the children's ward. Yeah. A daughter, I believe. I'm apparently in the children's ward. Yeah, all the signs are there. This must be the person. Merrill Butcher. Gotcha. I bet that's Merrill's mother. A young woman lost her life. Hmm. Mr. Butcher's wife. Mr. Butcher, I can confirm that we are willing to admit your daughter into the care of our hospital. You will be responsible for the travel expenditure, naturally taking all appropriate precautions due to the delicate state of your daughter. Additionally, you must attend to any accommodation cost and all medical attention. The final bill cannot be summarized within this letter. It will depend, of course, upon your daughter's condition, but I must warn you that the sum may be considerable. Dr. K. O. Medin, Karolinska University Hospital, Stockholm. Admission file at Karolinska University Hospital in Stockholm. And that's, oh, that's an iron lung kind of thing. What do we got here? Mr. Reginald Butcher, I've come from Scotland Yard. Might we talk? All right, but not too loudly. She's finally asleep. Is she your daughter? Our pretty little Meryl. She's very ill. Now look, I'm sorry I ran, but I had to see Dr. Blowberry today and the policeman wouldn't listen. Don't worry, I understand now. Let's go ahead and see what his profile has to say. Childish bracelet. That is definitely a daughter's gift. Shiny shoes, recently cleaned. Wedding ring on the other hand. Probably to make up for the facts. Oh, what was that? Shabby expensive waistcoat. Secondhand clothes was once prosperous. Railway worker. Hmm. Reginald Butcher, a married man, holds the position of railway worker. He is depressed due to the illness of his daughter, of whom he is extremely fond. His shoes are shining. They have no doubt been recently cleaned. His expensive waistcoat, now in shabby condition, reveals that he was previously a prosperous man. Mr. Butcher loves his daughter, and is not ashamed to wear a child's bracelet to display his affection. Can she be cured? It'll take a long time. But I'm confident that we'll win this fight. I can't bear to think otherwise. Yes, it's probably just a question of money. What are you talking about? It's a question of willpower, and my daughter will win. Yeah, but... We have this statement from the hospital, though. I do hope so. Although the treatment at the Karolinska University Hospital is very expensive. Ah, um, yeah, it's our only hope. Thanks to the good Dr. Blowberry, she finally has a bed. We're going out next week. It's our last chance. Do you have children? Yes, I have a daughter too. I'll, I'll bet you anything. We'd sacrifice our lives for our children, would we not? Yes. Of course, yes. I will bet you money that this guy did it. 
it's too much of a moral quandary not to actually be the case. What do you do for a living, Mr. Butcher? I... I work at the office of the Underground Electric Railways Company. Then you must be familiar with electrical devices. I am indeed. Why do you ask? It is of no consequence, but tell me, what are the reasons behind the problems you're experiencing at work? Problems? What do you mean? Yeah, we got the letter from Butcher's job. You have already received a written warning. Yes. I'm often late to work. My boss doesn't understand my situation. It's difficult since my daughter became ill. I see. Coincidentally, we found one of your company's cabs in the square where the accident occurred. Really? Why was it there? I have no idea. Do you? No. But a week ago, we had a technical cab stolen, along with its tools. Do you think that could be the one? It's possible. Hmm. Okay, can we talk to him again? Shh. Meryl's asleep. Resolve the murder at the square. Well, let's see what new connections we can make. Electrician and electrocution. That makes sense. Seriously ill daughter. Now we're going ahead and... Looks like we've ran out of clues. Reginald Butcher has problems at work due to the time off he has taken to visit his seriously ill daughter. Underground worker. Reginald Butcher works for the Underground Electric Railways Company. He could be familiar with the layout of the sewers from where the bank was robbed. And what's this one? Complex trap. Reginald Butcher knows how to work with electricity because of his job, but that doesn't mean that he would be capable of creating a deadly electrical trap. Reginald Butchers knows how to work with electricity. It's his job. He would have been able to trap the cab and activate the device, which is true. He has more know-how than anyone else. What's this one? Butcher's love. Reginald Butcher is not a criminal. He has a beloved daughter who is ill and needs her father. He would not risk becoming involved with bandits. Hopelessness. Reginald Butcher needs urgent medical care for his daughter. Because of this, he contacted the Rasco gang and helped them to rob the bank. I mean, he has that desperation because his wife is dead, probably recently dead. Mother or the daughter is sick. Mr. Butcher is a murderer. Hmm. Well, let's look at the other ones here. We got Thomas Garrett, the Anarchist. I'm not really feeling that with him. The only other person is Fowler, who was once a member of the Rasco gang. Hmm. Always a criminal. Oh, that cancels each other out. So we have to make a call here. Benjamin Fowler sometimes worked with electricity, but he's not a specialist, and it's doubtful he would know how to create such a deadly trap. That's the thing about it, though. It's... Everything's pointing to Butcher, because Butcher's got the real moral quandary to deal with. Uh, Fowler and Garrett don't. And he has all the know-how. He has knowledge of the railway lines, as well as electricity. He has everything, like all the pieces are there. So, let's go ahead and... Man, this is going to be rough. But Mr. Butcher is a murderer. Original Butcher helped the Rasco gang to rob the bank and then killed them for the money, so he'd get the full share. Condemn Reginald Butcher. He's a dangerous criminal who not only robbed the bank, but also killed all of his accomplices. He must be imprisoned. Absolve Reginald Butcher. His daughter is seriously ill. Because of this, he felt forced to rob the bank before killing his accomplices in order to take the money necessary for a treatment. Let him go that he might save his daughter's life. Okay. So, here's what we're going to do, guys. I have to think about this from Holmes' point of view. This version of Holmes. Now, we've been pretty heavy-handed in all of our um, choices. We've always usually condemned them and sent them to jail or let some other kind of ghastly fate, like uh, Lord Marsh, for example. 
But I think in Holmes's current mental state, what with uh, Caitlin, I think he'd actually absolve Reginald. Besides, and I know this is very, very gray here, but it's one of the things that the only people that he killed were criminals themselves. So he could take all the money. I know that doesn't absolve, like truly absolve him of everything, but I think Holmes in his current state would actually let Reginald go. So that's my moral choice, and I think we're going to go with it. Why not? What could possibly go wrong? Mr. Butcher. Shh. She's finally asleep. I knew you'd return. You should go to Stockholm with your daughter. You will save her. I've made my decision. Leave now. You understand? I was forced to do all this. Perhaps you were. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. Goodbye. He just seems like a very driven man. Reginald Butcher only wanted to save his daughter's life. To do this, he robbed a bank and killed his accomplices out of necessity. The circumstances are exceptional. He did not have any other choice. Not to mention the fact that the Rasco gang might have swerved him, too. Or made him a patsy. Absolve Reginald. Clues found 12. 73% of people made the same moral choice. I'm surprised about that. Let's, uh... Check. 12 out of 12 clues found. I did not expect to be done with this so soon. Um, the video's only gone for about 11 minutes. Okay. Well, we can go ahead and move on to the next one. No worries. And we will finish the case. I feel good about that. Disaster strikes. Fever dreams. That's... Oh, disaster because of, of the wreck and the electricity. Okay. But this is the inside of Alice's room. That's actually, now that I think about it, we have not dealt with anything regarding Caitlin and Alice during that last case. So maybe we're going to make up for it here. Let's see what happens. Holmes, at last you're back. We can't find Kate. What? She went for her lesson, but the teacher says that Kate never arrived. Mrs. Hudson! She's gone out to ask around the neighborhood. Betcha it's Alice. Find Kate. Okay, well, first thing we're going to do, let's go ahead and check her room, and then we'll check Alice's. Kate, you here? Holmes is beside himself, for obvious reasons. Let's look around. Oh, our science table's fixed. I'm already getting a really creepy vibe, and we got a new letter here. Hey, Holmes, you don't need to repair your window just yet, because this is not over, you filthy scum. Do you think that putting Percy behind bars will save you? We are many, and you won't be able to track us all. Anonymous. Ugh. Mr. Holmes, I can never thank you enough for all that you've done. I must live with what I did, but you understood me. My Merrill is recovering slowly. Today she managed to eat a little soup. I cried. We have good hope that she will live. With all my gratitude, Reginald Butcher. Ah, well, at least we had one happy ending. Kate! Oh, things look ransacked in here. We've got ink spilt on the sheets. Build a character portrait by paying attention to the details. She was writing something here. F. Missing writing. Okay. You can tell in Holmes' uh, voice. He is... Ooh. Why would she take her suitcase? I bet Alice grabbed her. Either Alice grabbed her or she, she ran away. Why was it left open? She took all of her favorites. He packed her things and left. I don't understand. Whoa. What's that? The sound came from Alice's room. Alice! Why, things are getting trippy. Oh Lord. I've had enough of you not caring about me. You don't deserve anything. I'm a child who's living off of me. 
Uh huh. And we have an axe suddenly. Okay. I bet we're cutting down. We're cutting down Alice's door right now. I'll bet you money. What else is here? Old cemetery. Daughter. Your daughter? You don't have one, Mr. Holmes. You never did. No, I wouldn't slap her. My God! My daughter, what did you do to her? What you could never do, I made her happy. I don't care what you think. Next one, she gets a slap. Is Kate? You fool. You're useless to her. Why even bother? Okay. Holmes, stop that. I'll make her talk. We don't need her. Just use your skill. I'll take care of her. I have a firm backhand, Holmes. Man, look at Holmes. He's like, his body posture and everything is just crazy. I remember this place from my last visit. It's different now. Something was taken from here. What was taken? Candles near the chair. Hamilton's portrait. Is there something else? Or my choice is not entirely correct. Dope. Cupboard. Oh, okay, I see, I see. So the portrait is missing, the candle's missing. I like that we can go back and forth here. The portrait's still there. Wheelchair is missing. And the crib is missing as well. Okay, so. Candle's near the chair. The grim, the portrait. We'll deselect the cupboard. Um, come on, we need to mention, oh, there it is, the wheelchair, is the mirror still there, where's the clock, no, the clock, the clock and the mirror have just been moved, no, choice is not entirely correct, hmm, I do, I do really like... Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, the table of practice. My choice is not entirely correct. Is there something missing here on the desk? Ah, the photograph. My choice is not entirely correct. This is what I heard from upstairs. Crashing sound. Alice entered through here. Hmm. We are missing something, and I cannot... Oh, we can do a profile. Well, this is certainly escalated quickly, and the fact that she's in mourning clothes is not good. White traces, use chalk, okay. Is that everything, or I am missing something? Oh! Train ticket to Highgate Station. My choice is not entirely correct. Okay, the wheelchair I already selected, I'm pretty sure I did. Yeah, wheelchair. Cradle. Yeah, the mirror's just different. Well, I guess we could go ahead and... Yeah, the clock. No, those, uh, those are to get us off the scent, I'm pretty sure. 
I just need to look for things that are missing. The phonograph is definitely missing. Table of practice, nothing over here. Hamilton's portrait. What am I missing here? Give me one sec here, guys. So I am noticing another difference. Check this out. Those pictures have been torn down, it looks like. Or they burnt. Hmm. I know the phonograph for sure. I thought that might have been the case. Wait, can we go to any other part of the room? I'm not sure. I don't think so. Violin. Yeah, I don't... Not now. Yeah, not now. Oh, okay, Holmes, or uh, Watson's got a gun on her. Hmm, I'm kind of at a loss here, guys. I am not exactly sure. I'm trying to look for any kind of significant difference. And I am not seeing it. Other than the table of practice. My choice is not entirely correct. Well, I'll keep looking. Okay, I think I just derped that up was all. I uh, still had the cradle and the wheelchair selected. So let's grab the table of practice and see if that works. There we go. Portrait of Alice's father, William Hamilton, and some items required to conduct a seance are missing. Man, we can make connections. Portrait of Alice's father. Fair enough. Alice might have performed a spiritual seance to talk to her father, William Hamilton. And what's the next one? Morning clothes and ticket to Highgate. There's a school, a cemetery, docks, and country houses located there. Possibility that Alice visited Highgate Cemetery before returning to Baker Street. Uh oh. Alice may have visited Highgate Cemetery this morning to the crypt of her father, William Hamilton, where she performed a spiritual seance in order to talk to him. Did she take Kate with her as well? Let's see. Talk to her again. The lead goes to the cemetery. Watson, keep an eye on her. So, find Kate, inspect the crypt of Alice's father. Ugh. This will not change anything, Mr. Holmes. Well, maybe, but Holmes still has to try and get Kate back. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do, guys. I'm actually going to go ahead and end the episode here. Um, did not expect this. Just kind of out of the blue. And we will head to inspect the crypt of Alice's father in the next episode and hopefully find Kate, too. If you liked it, please leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, that'd be a big help, and we'll see you next time. Later days, everyone.